Hi, I'm Kirsty from KJG Home. I work at my local school. I cover teach and I teach mainly art and music. So that's kind of what I do. And also, I'm, I'm a mum to three kids. No uh, My interior style, I would say, is contemporary but classic and also comfy. So, alliteration there, three C's. Yeah, homely. Homely but modern. And I think I've, I've had a lot of inspiration from Pinterest, from um, other Instagram users. And what I tended to do is I saved a lot of photos on Instagram and Pinterest, and then I found that there was a certain pattern that I was drawn to, and then realised that, that that was my style. My home, when I first moved in, was disgusting. The, the lady who had had it, the couple that had had it, had had it since 1965 when it was first built. So the original kitchen, everything was original and she had cats and so there was a lovely smell of cats in the house and the kitchen was the best because they were quite tall. All of the cabinets had been made in 1965 to suit them and so me and mum has been not very tall, I'm like 5'4 and he's 5'9 and we ended up looking like little children in this, in this kitchen. It was quite funny. So yeah, the whole back garden was gravel with lots of flowers and it was, yeah, it was pretty gross. It, it literally needed everything doing to it. I think any re renovation to start with a lot of thought and a lot of planning. I think if you're living in a space, or, or to live in a space first before you even decide what to do with it, um, to see what works for your family, because sometimes you have an idea, but then it's not that practical. So I think because we lived in this space for quite a long time before, it's worked out really well, because we know what works for us. We didn't renovate one room. <laughs> we renovated all of the rooms. The room that got started on, because it didn't affect us as a family at first, was this, this space here, the rear extension, because they could build that first before they knocked through. And then it got to a point where this bit was kind of almost done and then they needed to do all the interior and then we moved out at that point. I think my favourite room in the house has definitely got to be this area here that we're in. Only because, well one, it's my dream kitchen. I've got the kitchen that I've always kind of wanted. But it's the place where we all gather. So even if I'm cooking, somebody could be watching TV or somebody could be sat at the dining table. And also because it's such a large space, we can have lots of people in here and it not feel crowded so it's great for when you've got family over or friends so yeah this is the room that is my favourite so the front living room renovation was one of the last things that kind of took place because we needed to move out for that so originally we had an en one single door entrance way which was further up the hallway um, and then the hallway was blocked off so we decided to open that up and put a double door into that room so that you came in because it's quite a square room so it's nice we had hideous two little windows either side of the fireplace with huge radiators underneath so they were the first things that we wanted to get rid of so we blocked them up and we put under floor heating or we put under floor heating throughout downstairs um, but also, it was the only access that we had was through our living room to the rest of the house. So where the mirror is, the round mirror, um, is where we had double doors. So we went through the lounge, to then through the dining room, to the kitchen, to a playroom. And so we found that even though we had a best room, it never stayed best because the kids would always just end up going where we were rather than in the playroom. So it just, it was more like a through room, even though it was, it was still lovely. Um, so we obviously blocked that up, the double entrance way, and we had originally a gas fire in there as well, but we blocked that up, 
and decided to make it look a lot more contemporary and put the fire in with the fake surround the TV. We've also changed the windows as well in there, but they're on white on the inside, but anthracite on the outside. So yeah, so we literally rejigged the whole room really, but it, the space works so much better that way and I do love the symmetry of it as well. My proudest DIY renovation project, I would say with the help, massive help of my husband, because he's the brain, well, I'd probably say I'm the brains behind it, but he's the doer. You know, he's the one that actually can create it because he used to be a cabinet maker. There's a couple. So one is the log store. Now that kind of happened by accident because when they put the log burner in, they put it in the wrong place. So we wanted it more in the corner than what it is. And so I said, right, I would really love you know like a log store or something put in that corner so I kind of drew it out got some ideas from Pinterest of the things that I liked and he made it which is really good at making it I've also got the bookcase that's in my uh, lobby area I kind of drew the design and then he's really really good he made it out of MDF so it, it's, it's pretty handy but I, I do love that because it it's an inbuilt piece of furniture that looks a lot more expensive than it actually is For anybody renovating, a, an amazing tip is just to prepare for the worst. So, not necessarily prepare for the worst, but keep a log of everything. We had a set budget that I could not go over. I, I'm married to a Yorkshire man, so there's no way I could go a penny over. So we did a spreadsheet of roughly how much things would cost, but we kind of overpriced what it would be and then every time we spent something on the renovation we put it the real cost next to it and so if we saved any money from anywhere then we moved it to somewhere else so I would say do that it's really important that you do that and try and stick with that budget I know I've got friends that have they just get sucked in and go, oh, I love it. I'm just, I'm just going to buy it. And, and then it just gets more and more. I just was adamant that I was not going to go over. So I saved where I could, spent more on the things that I wanted. A good interior design tip, I would say, is if you're not sure on your style, do very much what I did, where save lots of pictures that you like and then see if there is a common theme that you go towards. So for me, it ended up going very neutral, very minimal. And so then, once I'd done that, so I then took specific areas. So I thought, right, these are the kind of the colours, this is the kind of look. And then I worked on the little details for each room, but kind of went, that is, that's how I kind of found my style. 